and slowly but surely we're starting to bring in more of those clouds and that's what we're going to continue to see as we move throughout the afternoon as an upper level disturbance starts to impact us and we have continued to see a bit of an uptick with the rotation it seems like we had a bit of a calming tornado period warning. tornado warning on this particular cell there it goes until 4.30. So Bullet and Nelson. So now we are going to be on until 4.30 because of this rotation that has continued to go up with this cell. So let's dive in a little bit closer. You can see Jude's outlining exactly where that rotation is. It's just to the south and also the east of Ridgetop. This is a destructive winds essentially. Even if there is not a tornado on the ground, this is still going to be problematic. We're getting tons of storm reports. What happens today will impact tomorrow. So if you're planning on coming to Oaks, you want it to be dry today. If you're going to Derby, you want it to rain more today. So it's kind of like playing the odds at a horse race. I'm only about five to 10 feet into the water. It's only just above my ankle. So we are playing it safe in case you're worried, but the water beneath me is very murky, very dirty. And if you look behind me, you go another 20 feet and that's when it really starts to get churned up. It gets a little bit more dangerous. This feels and looks like a hurricane that is strengthening. And it certainly is, Mark. We are watching this, and over the last several hours, you can tell when a storm is strengthening based on the pressure. So a few hours ago, that pressure was at 931. Now it's at 923. So that shows that this storm is strengthening and intensifying. This low just continues to churn counterclockwise over our area. So that's where we have this flash flood watch in effect throughout the rest of today out the door. Observations are so important for meteorology. So it's currently high, thin clouds, pretty calm. The first half of the day, not going to be too shabby. This is going to be your best friend this morning, your ice scraper. We're going to head over this way to show you what the LaGrange City Hall sign looks like. It is a sheet of ice. It's a layer that's very, very thick this morning. I would be this in a second. As you were saying, there's a little fan in here, so it's actually really comfortable. It's a little hard to walk in, but it's a real statement costume. <laughs> She's making, it's a real statement costume. She's making the sacrifice for us. You know what, Mark, since the last time we talked, things have gotten a little bit more hectic. We do have a couple more delays. One that really stands out is a road closure. I have not been able to warm up. Yesterday I was just chilled <laughs> to the bone. I had some chili for lunch. I slept in flannel pajamas and we're, we're about to the get same colder. wavelength. My hands are so <laughs> oh, cold. It's worse than mine. <laughs> and it's hard to get off because of the ice and snow that has developed throughout the course of today. This ivy here is completely frozen. You can see that the rotation was a little bit stronger and now it's starting to weaken as it moves up to the north and east out of our viewing area. So we only have four more minutes of this tornado warning. I think that it'll probably be canceled at that time frame, and we'll be able to send you back into programming. This gives you an idea here as we track it out when we're going to be seeing it in certain locations in the next couple of minutes. It's a transitional season. I'm in the sleeveless, Gina's in the tights. <laughs> I do have a coat though, so when I do my outdoor hits, because it's only 56 degrees, but then later today, 81 is what I'm forecasting for our high temperature. Good morning. I have to tell you, this is a first for me. I've never heard this song. Same. And we appreciate it, right? Yes. Mixing things up this morning for WDR Beats. We're going to be playing a few more of those for the remainder of the hour. But before that, we got to get to Santa. Yes. He's making his way where? Now he is in Perth, Tasmania. That was the last place that he was spotted. And then he's headed, get this. Adelaide. Adelaide. Australia. He's going to be there in one minute. And let's see, one minute and 30 seconds. And he has delivered 800 million gifts. Really impressive. So we're going to continue to watch him all day long. But for any of you geography enthusiasts, this is really quite a cool thing. It's all through NORAD. And you're able to look at exactly where Santa's going. So Tasmania is just to the south of Australia. Now he's back to Australia. So we're going to be watching him all day long. But we also have to get so what we're tracking back towards home and that's the potential for a white Christmas. It's currently 36 degrees dew point not far below at 28. We have some good moisture content in the area winds out of the east at seven miles per hour. So we do have a bit of a wind chill at 30 degrees. We do have a winter weather advisory from the National Weather Service that was issued last night right around the metro area and just to the north. And this is going to go in effect at 5 p.m. until midnight, roughly when we're expecting the snow in the area. We do have mostly cloudy skies and the snow is just up to our north and west. It's going to be impacting St. Louis, Indianapolis 
and you can see that we are in a cold front sandwich. That cold front that moved through the area yesterday, widespread rain across the area dropped our temperature significantly. Now this next cold front is a clipper system. They are known more for their cold air than their snow. It brings light snow, but you're going to notice the temperature significantly drop even more tomorrow. Now let's talk about the snow timing and totals. We are expecting the snow to arrive to our western counties roughly 1 to 2 p.m. Now, why are the western counties not included in that advisory? I think it's going to take a little bit of time for the snow to accumulate. We could also see a few raindrops quickly transition over to snow as the sun sets. We are going to have snow showers continuing throughout our evening hours and wrapping up probably about 11 to 12. Notice our temperatures tonight into the lower 20s, so about 10 degrees cooler, 10 to 15 degrees cooler than what we currently are at. And it's going to be gusty the entire day, gusts up to about 25 miles per hour. And those winds are still going to be blowing pretty quickly tonight. So therefore, it's going to feel into the single digits or pre-teens. So a very chilly start to your Christmas morning. We also want to talk about the potential for snow squalls and snow bursts. And that's very similar to a thunderstorm that you see in the middle of summer. They're hard to predict exactly where they'll fire off, but you are going to have the potential for higher snow totals where they fire off lowered visibility. We also have lower visibility because of those breezy winds and this could all lead to travel impacts tonight. How much snow are we talking about a half an inch to an inch north of the river north of I-64 about a half an inch to a dusting farther to the south dusting probably more likely to the south of Campbellsville. Tomorrow morning it's going to be a chilly start to the day 25 degrees at 10 a.m. and again feeling even colder thanks to those wind chill values at 3 p.m. 34 degrees, but the sun returns. So it's going to be a bright day and with any snow on the ground, it's going to be pretty reflective at 7 p.m. 31 degrees. Your entire seven day forecast on the screen teens for the air temperatures in the middle of the week. We will have the snow chances as well for the middle of the week and Sunday New Year's Eve 18 degrees to ring in the new year. WDRV Weather is sponsored by Liquor Barn. We've been talking about today for the past few days, a day to be weather aware. Storm Prediction Center has most of our viewing area underneath a moderate risk. That's a level four out of five. It means that we could see supercells, widespread strong to severe storms. It doesn't include all of our viewing area, but I would say that just act as though you are because we all pretty much have the same potential. Damaging winds, large hail, few tornadoes, but really we have all modes of severe weather on the table potentially. Worst of the storms is afternoon and evening. I would say our main threats destructive hail and damaging winds. We could see some really large hail with this storm later today. Rain rates two to four inches per hour, but they're going to be moving pretty quickly, so we could see a few flash flooded warnings, but they're going to be pretty brief. We've already seen one round of strong storms, nothing severe, but that already moved out earlier this morning, and now we have ample dry time allowing our atmosphere to heat up. We've also seen a couple isolated storms pop up. You see this one that storm in Du Bois County around 1030 and then moved throughout Orange County. Now that one already dissipated, but there's another cluster of storms just to the north of Jackson County. That one's actually blossoming quite nicely. You see how there's quite a bit of lightning there, heavy rain too, and what we are paying attention to for later this afternoon. From Chicago all the way down to St. Louis, you see how there is some cloud cover, some light rain at this point. That is going to be where we see more showers and thunderstorms develop later today. That's the cold front and an unseasonably strong low to the north of that. This is something we usually see in the middle of spring, not the middle of July, and that's why today is such an oddball day. It's 83 right now. We have a dew point of 73. The dew point has surged in the last 12 hours, really. Yesterday at around 10 o'clock, Rick was doing the evening news and the dew point was 57. Now it's at 73. And even in the last two hours, it went from 70 to 73. So the moisture continues to boost. A southerly wind at 10 to 11 miles per hour. And that's where we're getting all of this moisture from. You can see how strong that low is. That's showing that wind and bringing all of that moisture right to Kentucky. And that's the fuel for these showers and 
storms later today. I think between about three and five, we're going to start to see some more of these showers and thunderstorms develop, and it's going to continue through the rest of the day on and off. If you don't see any in the evening, I think you could see more later tonight. Notice on advance track here, it's at 1230, and we could still have more strong storms because there's still a lot of instability available even after the sun sets. Cold front pushes through, but there's still a low hanging around the area. So showers and thunderstorms will continue through the rest of the weekend, mainly in the afternoon and evening. Sunday, I think it's going to be the better chance of the two to see some soggy conditions. And because it's going to be a bit rainy, temperatures cooler than normal. Average is 89. We're going to be about 10 degrees cooler than that. And scattered showers and storms continue into next week.